Hello, my name is Miss Sasha. I'm a teaching artist in the Pace Arts Program through the Acadiana Center for the Arts with the Lafayette Parish School System in Lafayette, Louisiana. Today we are going to create a hot air balloon in the sky of your choice. We have some simple supplies that you'll need, um, a variety of crayons. As you can see, the hot air balloons are really colorful. Um, scissors, I mean glue and scissors. You can also grab a light colored piece of construction paper. I used yellow, but another color will do just fine, or even white will be just great if that's all you have. And you can also grab um, either a brown piece of construction paper or some recycling, um, and we'll use that for either the basket or some other examples that I have planned for you today. So you can go ahead and pause the video and gather up your supplies. When you're all set to go, all you have to do is press play. Now that you've gathered all your supplies, we can get started. Um, today, I think we will get started on our hot air balloon first, the actual balloon. And that way, you can be thinking about what you want your background to be, what you want in your sky. As you can see, some of these, these are done by kids. They have a city in the background, um, maybe some mountains right here. Maybe they just have a sunset or maybe even some green space just like this. This is a bunch of hot air balloons at a festival and this is them getting ready to, to head up into the sky. Okay, so I have a yellow piece of paper. I chose a light color because the crayons can go over it pretty easily. You can also use markers if that's what you have, or a white piece of paper works really good. So on my example over here, I have a rainbow in the sky and some clouds, and I have three different size balloons. So we'll start with three different size balloons. Um, this is almost a full sheet of construction paper. So if you don't have that, or you have one white and a little bit of yellow, it doesn't matter. You can see the backgrounds of all of these are pretty different. So I'm going to grab, say, a blue, something that will show up. Or Actually, I'll get a purple out of my crayon stash. We're not going to worry about the baskets. We're going to worry about the top. And while we're here, I'll just let you know that the top is called the envelope. It holds the hot air that's created by the heat source, and the heat source is called the burner. So the burner will be blowing all the hot air up into that balloon, which gets it started. And they all start off on the ground, kind of deflated like you would see a regular balloon with no air in it. And as the burner heats it up, the balloons start to stand up. And then once it's full enough of air, it starts to go up into the sky. Okay, here we go. We'll start with a large one. Um, you can do a circle if you want. Um, watch, I'll go ahead and do a circle for this one, and then I'll make like a little extension at the bottom. This is not the basket. This is just part of the balloon, and this little line will become part of my design, my patterns, my lines, my shapes, whatever I want it to be. Okay, and then I'll do a medium and a small. If you can't fit them, get another piece of paper. If you just want two, that's fine. If you want ten, that's fine as well. I mean, look how many are in this sky right here. So I'll do a medium one. Maybe I'll fit it up here. And I'll do a little extension. Again, this becomes part of the balloon. And then I can fit a little one right here. So here's a smaller one. There. So I have a large, medium, and a small hot air balloon. I'm going to just use the same color to make all my designs, my patterns, and my shapes. And then that way I can fill them in with whatever color I want. So this one I went kind of horizontally across. Maybe my large one this time I'll do vertical stripes, somewhat like these, right? Okay, so I might start at the top and do a line all the way to the bottom. And maybe they kind of curve and curve. Whoops, all the way down. You see how I made that part of my design? And even if I wanted to have it more a design there too, I could have that as well. So maybe on my medium one, I'll do horizontal stripes. Watch. Maybe I'll do curve lines. Uh, maybe this is a large curve line. Underneath, I might do a pattern. And maybe some zigzags. And another curve line there. I can always come back and add more, right? In fact, I'll do that right now. I'll do some spots, some tiny spots. 
or dots. Call them what you want. And this guy is just little. You choose. You pick whichever you want. I'll go ahead and do my, uh, I'll do some vertical and some horizontal. Look. There. So I have a little variety. I'll let you get all caught up while you're doing that. Let's see. The balloon is lighter than air, which is why it floats across the sky. It's another reason why you can't go in a hot air balloon on inclement weather, whether it be snowing or raining or too cold or too hot. It has to be almost a perfect day to go up in your hot air balloon. So suspended below the balloon is called the gondola or the wicker basket, which is where the passengers are carried. So up in here is where the passengers are carried. Look, they're really a lot tinier than the ones that I have on my example. But if you want to put little people in it, you'll have space. Okay? All right. So now we can go ahead with any color you want and start designing or decorating your hot air balloon. Um, let's see. I'll do some orange. I'll do this space orange. If you go out of the lines, that's okay too because we're going to end up cutting these hot air balloons out. Oh, I'll do orange here too. I'll make this one a pattern. How's that? And since I have orange in my hand, I'll go ahead and add maybe um, an orange stripe to this one. Okay. And then you can go ahead and pick another color. We can do this together, especially since our hotter balloons probably look a lot different from each other's. I'll do this one. This is kind of a red violet. there. And maybe I'll do this space with red violet since I have it in my hands. If you're using markers, it's always nice to do your outline with markers and then color in with the crayons, but you don't have to do it that way either, right? While you're coloring in some of your hot air balloons, let's see. Um, hot air balloons were invented in France in the 1700s. And funny thing is that the first passengers to take a ride in a hot air balloon was a sheep, a duck, and a chicken. They were the first balloon passengers. And it was just a tiny eight-mile ride. And they all landed safely. They were all okay. All right. Uh, maybe I should add some other colors, some cool colors. Since I've only added warm colors of reds, oranges, and yellows, I'll go ahead and add some green. I'm going to go around these cool shapes. There's some green. What color did you choose for your shape? There's so many colors in the rainbow. You'll have plenty to choose from, right? I'll do Maybe I'll do this one green and these two green. See how that little space kind of just extended into the balloon? Sometimes you can just color over those different lines, even if you think they're a mistake. They probably really aren't, and they can be fixed. So I'll do some blue. Maybe I'll do this blue. And up here, blue. I'll be careful to go around those spots. There. And maybe a little blue on this one. Okay. On this one, I'm going to add some dots. We haven't done that. Um, just so you can see that. I can even leave some of my balloon just plain yellow, like I did on this background. So I can just add some cool designs to it and then leave it. Watch. I'll do some ovals.
There, and that hot air balloon is just about done. I can even take this blue, ooh, there's a little spot right there I didn't add, and I can add even some more designs with it if I like it. Look, right there. Cool, I'm almost done with those. I'll add a little bit of pink maybe to this one uh, and finish this one up. I'm going to go back to that purple because I don't have any purple. Let's see. I'm going to just add some stripes with my purple and stripes. See, I'm not actually coloring it all in. I might just be adding some different lines to it, like this one. See? I have all those hot air balloons. I'll let you finish up coloring, and then we will work on our basket. Now that our hot air balloons are all colored in, we can work on the basket or the gondola part. You can use a brown piece of construction paper. You can use the back of a of some recycling or just a white piece of paper as well to make our baskets. I'm going to tape this guy up right here so you can see I'm going to be making probably a large, medium, and a small basket, right? Because that's what we have for our hot air balloon. And look, mine are slightly different shaped. Um, I'm going to use a brown crayon. You can use whatever color you want. Your baskets can be all different colors as well. You can totally use your, your imagination, right? I'm just, I'm just helping you to learn how to draw hot air balloons. So I'm going to draw a nice big basket for this big one. Look, curve, and then I'll have one that's a little bit smaller. Maybe this one will be a little bit more square, right? And this one's really tiny. Maybe this is just another curved basket like that, right? I went ahead and put like basket weave on mine, and you can do that as well. You can go horizontally and vertically, right? You could go diagonal. And this one is just so tiny. Do whatever you want in the little, little one. So I have three baskets, large, medium, and small. Have you thought about what your background's going to be? Um, like I said, this one has a rainbow in the back. But I drew this one earlier, and it's got some mountains in the background, right? We could even draw a city in the background, little buildings. Um, you could have a prairie in the background. You could have a farm in the background. The sky is the limit for what can be uh, what your hot air balloon can be flying over especially if they go for miles and miles right so actually the longest piloted um, hot air balloon ride was from Japan to North Canada it was piloted by a guy named Richard um, Barson I think that's how it's pronoun pronounced um, and the fastest uh, on record was a hot air balloon that was going 245 miles an hour that's very fast. Um, so let's go. Let's go ahead and get your scissors. We're going to cut our hot air balloons out. And our baskets or the gondola, right? Do you remember what the name of the top of the hot air balloon was called? Hmm, it's called the envelope. It's called the envelope. Okay, I'm going to get mine cut out. And then I'll just kind of tape them up here so we can keep an eye on them. Okay. Here we go. One at a time. Just take your time. Not a big deal. If you cut some of your hot air balloon off, that's fine too. Okay. Here's my large one. Have you been practicing your cutting? Remember, you always get better the more practice you do. Here's my small one. Small and medium. 
If you need to pause the video at any time to get caught up by getting your hot air balloon all cut out, that's fine too. All you have to do is press play when you get back. And don't forget to cut out your, uh, your baskets or your gondola as well. Now that I have all my hot air balloon parts cut out, I can show you a few options before we actually glue them down onto a background. So I have a hole puncher, and I know that wasn't in your supply list, but I'm just showing you some options if you want to make another hot air balloon at another time. You can always take your largest hot air balloon and watch. You can punch one, two, three holes, or more if it's bigger, less if it's smaller. So I have these holes, right? And then you can take your basket. I'm gonna punch four holes in this one. Three is fine as well. One, two, three, four. So now I have those. Look, four little holes. And I have a little tiny piece of string. And you can kind of weave it together. Let's see if we can do this together. Whoops, losing balloons, okay. So I'm going to start with the hot air balloon, and I'm just going to tie a little knot. Remember, if you need some help with a, from a parent to do this part, that's fine. Any type of string will do. Yarn, cord, um, beading, twine, whatever you need. So look, I have one little tie here. I'm going to go into my balloon, into my basket. And then into my balloon, watch. See? And then back into my basket. I'll show you. Look. Until it's all corded. And then all you have to do after that is tie it off, right? Into my balloon into my basket. Oh, maybe I should have just done three. No biggie, I'll go back through that one. Gets kind of complicated, right? I'll go back into this hole and finish it off into my basket. It's all fixable. If I have too much cord, then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, cut it. But I can make my basket hang as low as I want. I'm gonna go ahead and tie it off again. And then I'll cut that extra cord off. Look, see, look. And this is extra. Cut it off. It looks like my basket's hanging to the side a little bit. I can fix that by just kind of pulling on it. Don't pull too hard because you'll go through your, um, your uh, you'll pull it through your construction paper. Oh, here we go. It's good enough. Look, right? So now when I go to glue it on my paper, I can maybe glue it to where it's hanging off like this, watch, and then that balloon's in the background, and this one's farther in the background. See, I didn't glue them right away, so I could kind of move them around on my paper and find the best spot. Um, I want to show you something else, too, that's kind of cool. If you have any old calendars lying around that have, like, um, a city, a village, mountains, really, whatever, I'm going to show you this, watch. If you have an old calendar, even I got this from an old magazine, and you have your hot air balloon, you could place it anywhere you want, floating across the sky, right? Um, I have this little forest picture. Look, you get a little piece of tape, a little forest, maybe the hot air balloons flying across the forest. These kids right here did that with some of them. They cut out some cities in the background and used that for the background of their hot air balloon adventure, right? And one other thing is that um, the lar they have hot air balloon festivals. So the largest hot air balloon festival is in Albuquerque, New Mexico. It goes on for nine days, and there's over 750 hot air balloons. And like I said before, they cannot fly in the rain. It changes the temperature um, of the fabric, and it can end up ruining the fabric, and it can be not a good deal, right? Also, hot air balloons have what we call a chase crew. Every time a hot air balloon goes up in the sky, it's not going to land where it started from. So they have to have a group of people um, or a ground crew that follows the hot air balloon um, through, uh, as it goes on its trip, 
They're in a car, and the car has to be big enough to pick up the balloon, the basket, and all the passengers when the trip is over and bring them back to where they started. So um, it's pretty involved. It has to do with good, uh, good weather and a car big enough. So there's a lot that ha has to happen before you go up in a hot air balloon. But look how cute this hot air balloon is. Don't you love it? All right, it's time to get started on our background. Our background is going to be the sky or the area that's behind our hot air balloon. It could be a rural, urban, or a suburban landscape because hot air balloons can fly over anything. So it can fly over a city, can fly over, say, a farm. It can even fly over a neighborhood. Have you ever seen a hot air balloon in the sky? I have. I've been to one of the festivals, and it was really amazing to see. Um, okay, and another thing is, look here, all these hot air balloons are different shapes. So if you go to a festival, you're not just going to see this shape. And of course, if you want to draw a different shape, go right ahead. We have cactuses, we have silly clowns, we have frogs, bumblebees, sunshines, elephants, tomatoes, chili peppers, anything you can think of um, can be a hot air balloon. The Macy's uh, Thanksgiving Day Parade has tons of hot air balloons only they're not the kind that has a basket under it underneath but they're kind of the same so you can see all those different shapes okay um this is done with a rainbow i thought maybe we could do like a rural landscape also wanted to show you another um example of something you could do if you have extra construction paper you can always make like a city background by just cutting out different shapes of construction paper to build your buildings. So I just used a few different shapes to make a building and I'll take these off when we go to color our background. Watch. We have a little short green one in the front. We can have another tall blue one over here. You can draw windows on them. Oh look, I can put a purple one. I can do an orange one. If I think the orange one is too tall and I need another shorter building, look. You just cut it. Watch. So look. And then you can have your hot air balloon look. flying over your city. Eee. See? Cool. Options, right? Lots of them. So let's go ahead and do a rural landscape. Maybe where a farm would be. We'll make it simple. Go ahead and get your crayons. I have green. I'm just going to do a curve line, maybe across my page. Right? I can do, we can do different types of crops. That's easy. Watch. We can do zigzag, zigzag, zigzag. You can pick a different color. I'll get blue. Maybe I'll do another curve line here with blue and across. I'll go across horizontal across my landscape. I can pretend like I'm growing flowers in this crop. Big, beautiful, colorful flowers. I don't have to color in the background. You can if you'd like. I'll do another, I'll do, let's see. Maybe I'll do this green again. Maybe I'll go across here, right? Maybe my lines this time are very close and vertical. And I can always come back with, look at this, I have this tiny little crayon green that I peeled the paper off of and if you pinch it like this you can kind of rub the color in there. We can do it over the whole thing. We can add some more flowers to this one. Maybe we'll do some X's for flowers. Right? What can you put up here? You can't do a rainstorm. It'll ruin the hot air balloon. Maybe we could do a big, beautiful sunset. You could add a rainbow. Let's do, let's do, uh, oh, you can even put like a little tractor. You could put a little barn. Let's try that. Look, 
I'll do a little barn here. Right. Just using all kinds of shapes. I did a square, a triangle, another rectangle, and a curved line. Put a crisscross in the middle of there. Let's see if I have red. Red crayon. I can color in my barn. If you know how to draw a tractor, you can draw a tractor. Something fun and easy to draw is like a, um, a fence. Let me see. Here we go. A fence. You can go across your farm. You put a little fence there. You could draw farm animals or build them with construction paper. We can do a big, beautiful sun. Watch. I'm using orange, and I'm just going to make my sun rays go across the sky. And then I can take the yellow, maybe color it in real good, make some more sun rays. I'm okay with the sky being that. Or look, here's a yellow one on its side. Pinch. Make it a bright, beautiful sun. You can leave it white. You could do it blue. You could put clouds in the sky if you'd like. All of those are good ideas. When you're all set to go, you can grab your um, glue. And since your hot air balloons are not stuck yet, you can kind of place them around, maybe here. Maybe this one's far, far, far in the background because it's so little. Maybe my big hot air balloon is going to hang off the page. Look, you can move them around. If you don't want your barn to be there, look. Ta-da! No more barn. So I don't like to glue things right ahead of time when I'm making multiples like this. And then you can move them around. You can see where they fit best in your picture. And the final touch you can do after you glue them is add the little strings to the two that don't have any. If yours looks like this, you don't need to. It's already got the string. Um, super fun. You Again, if you have calendar pages. I mean, there's so many possibilities to doing this hot air balloon. And I hope you want to share it with some of your friends or family on uh, how to, to build this hot air balloon. So we'll be posting new lesson every day from 10 a.m. at 10 a.m. on the Acadiana Center for the Arts YouTube channel for kindergarten, first and second grade, each tied to an academic curriculum. You can also get these on AOC as part of the Learn United program, accessible on AOC on Cox Channel 16 or LUS Channel 4. Kindergarten lessons air at 8 and first and second grade at 9. Some lessons will be in visual arts and some in creative movement. So be sure to come back and make art with us tomorrow. If you're interested in supporting programs like this, visit AcadianaCenterForTheArts.org, the nonprofit who manages the PACE program. Spread the word, share our videos, and keep making art.